Hello. Well, today I want to begin uh, sort of a, a series of videos in a way of sorts where I basically talk about uh, a film in a trilogy um, uh, each week or each episode. Maybe the next time in a day will be have both the final two uh, installments, but what that is is a uh, the Godfather trilogy. Um, now I talked about this uh, trilogy just as an overview of sorts of just talking about my thoughts on the trilogy, and uh, yeah, I really enjoy this trilogy, and I've been thinking about. What am I going to say uh, about these movies? You know, there's so many analysis of each film. There's so many discussions. And, you know, uh, particularly the first two, uh, I really have come to the conclusion there really isn't much I can say that's brand new about these films. Um, I will say I do enjoy part three, um, but I'll get to that talk about part three. Uh, so, I thought I would just give my sort of impressions of The Godfather back when I first saw them, although it was even before I saw them, when I heard, and then if what my thoughts are now, if I still think uh, the same as before, or if my thoughts have changed a bit. So, and if you saw my initial video, you'll know this is not the exact same Blu-ray set I had before. I mean, all the contents and everything are the exact same, but I was able to get this version at a price that was pretty decent. Um, there's a set where it's just black background with the Godfather and, you know, there's some gold like this, and but there's like a blood. Uh, um, there at the bottom, or near, like the corner down, and it just has like the faces of Brando and Pacino, and yeah. But that's just if you've seen that video, you'll know this is different. I was able to again get that at a good price. Gave that Blu-ray set to my uh, mother, who likes the Godfather trilogy, um, and it was uh, because of this that I was um, yes, I was a thir I was 13 years old when I got this uh, the Godfather trilogy originally. Uh, you know, walking through Target, you know, looking at some movies with my mom. She was getting things. And, uh, the Godfather trilogy was there, obviously, um, for this, is that, this wouldn't make sense to this story, um, and I looked at it, uh, I was looking at the various contents inside from the three films, what all was in, like, the documentaries and stuff, just curious, and, um, yeah, that, that really, uh, it's a set that I'm like, this would be really cool to get one day. Um, but I didn't think about it too much. So I uh, was also looking at other movies. Uh, you know, every Tuesday here in America, new films on, on DVDs and Blu-rays come out. So, you know, I believe it was a Tuesday or a Wednesday. I guess it doesn't matter too much, but um, Tuesdays would be usually the day you'd go and get a DVD or a Blu-ray that just came out. And so I was, you know, just looking at them and look up The Godfather. Um, came down the aisle I was in and looked at it, and uh, the next thing I know, that was in like the cart uh, with the various other things she was getting, so I didn't expect that, but uh, 
she uh, she bought me the trilogy uh, so thought that was pretty cool and I remember uh, thinking about the movies and I recall hearing various things about the Godfather trilogy how they're so violent and they're incredibly violent that was a big thing I heard back then uh, I guess you even in a way might hear that uh, today so in my mind I have this I know Al Pacino and Brando and Duvall and so many of the incredible actors and actresses who are in these films uh, you know I've, I've seen them in other films um, or at the very least if I hadn't at that point in my life uh, because around 11, 12, I was really beginning to get more into other movies, you know. I like Star Wars, and I like uh, Batman, things like that. Quite a lot of action and stuff, and, and there are dramatic moments in those films. But this is really like a huge, big drama. Um, and with all these thoughts of violence in my head, you know, going into watching these movies, I was, um, I didn't know what to expect other than there's going to be a violence. Then again, it's a film with the mob, you know, mafia, whatever. And, uh, that night I watched the first one, and for like the first, like, 15, 20 minutes or so, there's really no violence, and I was surprised, you know, hearing how violent this trilogy is, you know, for the first one, there's not much violence. At most, you know, we have Sonny breaking the guy's uh, camera at the very beginning. That was as violent as that got. Um, so, as the film goes on, we s begin to see sort of an escalation of violence. You know, we have the famous head, uh, the head gets, the, the horse's head uh, in the bed, um, which has been parodied for so long. Um, you know, Luke Brazzi gets strangled right after getting his hand stabbed in the table and he's just strangling is so it's quite quite disturbing you know his eyes are bulging out and everything and then uh, and um, uh, Vito Corleone is also shot you know it's like he's gonna die uh, and it's very very unfortunate And then later, uh, his son Michael uh, Pacino, he gets punched in the face. And uh, later, goes and uh, uh, kills the cop who punched him, as well as the man who ordered the hit on his father. And there's also other moments, you know, like uh, also, uh, you got a. Uh, Sonny, um, uh, Connie, Connie, you know, uh, her husband, who at the very beginning, she's getting married, and, uh, she's being, uh, she's being beaten, uh, by her husband, and Sonny always goes and, like, he goes to defend her and beats him up, you know, and he's, you know, not happy with all this, understandably so. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's just an escalation of violence that really uh, uh, ramps up as the movie goes on. And it really showed just how violence was used in movies and just how, in a way, effective and, in a way, important it was, you know, in that world. It's important in, in which, you know, 
you know, there are various tactics used, like, you know, there's meetings, there's talking, you know. You know, violence isn't always necessarily the first thing people want to jump to. Uh, you know, there's meetings about various deals and business, you know, ventures and partnerships. That would be, you know, good. But when things don't pan out the way they would like them to, like some want them to, uh, violence is then used. It's, you know, either an extreme level of violence or the violence will just escalate from there. Um, start very small and just get bigger. Uh, and this really showed just how violence in movies can be used in a way that was just really It told the story in a way that wasn't, like, over the top, let's say. There was a point to it. That's what I'm really trying to make, get here. Um, now, obviously, you know, Star Wars, uh, you know, it's in the title, Star Wars. There's a war going on, so there is a point. And then, you know, the original trilogy gets some backstory with the crawl. And then with the prequels, you see how all that began. Uh... Uh, Batman, you know, Gotham City is a, uh, has a lot of crime, you know, and Batman is one of the few people who are, who is going to go out and help stop that crime with the police, because a lot of the police are corrupt and are, as long as they're getting paid by criminals or mafia guys, which I guess would, you know, they'd be criminals, you know, as long as they're on some sort of payroll and getting something out of, uh, essentially looking a blind eye while, uh, criminal activities go on, you know. In a way, that's not too far off from The Godfather, though based off of a comic book, um, you can say some of the stuff in Bat the Batman films, some of them might be a bit, uh, could be either exaggerated or done for, like, just for entertainment value, you know, where The Godfather, there is a sort of a point in where violence is used, but it's not always the method they want to, the people involved want to go to directly. Before violence happens, you know, let's have a meeting, let's have a sit down, talk about this or that, uh, about doing business uh, that would be beneficial to uh, everybody involved um, but you know if that doesn't pan out uh, then well what happens later uh, that's it's incredibly it, it can get very messy um, but yeah, this is a, it really just showed me just how violence in film can be depicted in a way that's not, you know, just not over the top. Because there are various films that are very over the top. You know, there's many horror films that are quite over the top with violence. Um, and that's either a good thing or a bad thing. You know, sometimes depending on the movie. Violence that's over the top can be beneficial. Other times, it's like he had violence for the sake of violence there when it didn't need to be there. Maybe at certain points, you look at the, how the film goes. Okay, violence, I get, I get why that's there. But then there might be other times where that just happened for the sake of it happening. Just for shock value or because they wanted to have a violent moment for really no reason. Uh, uh, well, if it's a horror film, particularly a slasher film, well, then sometimes there's a lot of body counts just because well, it's a slasher film. Um, Godfather isn't a slasher film, but it is a very good film. Uh, uh, again, 
was like 13, I was just surprised and hit with how, there, while it is quite a violent film, I think some of the people who, when they talked about how violent it was, I think they kind of exaggerated a bit, kind of talked it up, and not in a way that was bad, you know, I remember the people who said that enjoyed them and liked them, so they weren't being saying it in a negative way. But looking back, it just seemed like they were just, I guess, trying to sell me on something. Yet when I was really getting into more films that weren't didn't have a lot of action in it, or as much action as, say, Star Wars, um, they they. They're just, I guess they might have been try, just trying to sell it to me. Like, you should just watch this because there's a lot of violence and this and that. You know, I got really invested with the characters and the story. Um, again, that all of those those two things have been discussed so much. Can't bring anything new to the table with that. Love the story. Love the characters. Michael is my favorite character and just this film, but the trilogy, um, Vito is incredible, um, you know, won Best Picture and Screenplay, Adapted Screenplay and Best Actor, deserving of those, though, I do think El Pacino deserved a Best Actor nomination, um, I've mentioned ties here and there on this channel when it comes to awards, I think Brando and Pacino could have tied if such a instance could have uh, allowed for it um, but if I had to choose one I think to win I think I probably would have chosen Pacino I just loved his performance in this um, and I love Brando's you know because he was the sole nominee that year for best actor with this film um, you know I have no problem with him winning so with that said, with Pacino for supporting actor, I'd be for uh, Pacino. But if he wasn't nominated and just Duvall and Khan were nominated, I'd probably have Duvall win. But since the nominees are the way they are now, and if you couldn't choose, switch people in a certain category, that eliminate one from one category, you promote them to a leading status, uh, then yeah, I'd Pacino for supporting, and Brando for best actor, um, if they both couldn't die. <laughs> um, and I think Coppola should, uh, I think they sh he should have won director. Um, Bob Fosse won for, uh, Fosse, or no, Fosse for, he won for, uh, Bob Fosse won for Cabaret. Um, good film. Um, but not, I don't know. And I am biased in that. I love The Godfather, so uh, I just, I just, uh, yeah, I just like The Godfather more, and I think it was just directed just beautifully. Nobody else could have directed The Godfather. Father. Then again, you could say nobody but Bob Foster could direct Cabaret, and I'd say you're right. I just enjoyed this film, and I enjoyed rewatching it for this movie um, because honestly, all the thoughts I thought about back then, I think now, is still incredible, it's still great. I always love watching, and I get sucked into the story and the characters and everything. The characters that die, that you don't want to die. Um, you know, it's always it's quite unfortunate, but you know, I was like, you know, maybe if you did this or did that differently, I still you might have lived through the through the end. Um, but some characters, you know, when you look at at them in the story, they were always gonna die. Uh, you know, Sunny, Sunny just had. Uh, uh, always had a bad temper, so 
unfortunately, he was probably always going to get killed. Um, Fredo really speaks and does things when he should be quieter. Sometimes he doesn't know when to shut up. <laughs> Which is more apparent in the sequel. I'll get to that uh, a bit. Um, yeah, he just... But Michael, you know. And there's a series of changes with Michael. Which is why I think I, I, I really prefer him. He goes from the guy who wants nothing to do with his family. Uh, in the family business, I should say. He loves his family. But nothing with the, for the business. He doesn't want to do anything with that. But then gradually gets sucked in. Like once his father is shot, he slowly becomes to be an active part in the business. Uh, he goes to Italy. Here's his brother. It's killed. That affects him quite a bit. And then a woman he met, whom he married, uh, and he was very happy with, she is killed in a car bomb meant for him. And the next time you see him, he's, he's changed. His demeanor, his voice, everything is changed. He's not the same anymore. And it's quite sad to see all that. A man who wanted nothing to do with the family business has now then becomes, over the course of the film, the head of the family. And it's not something he wanted or for himself. And he wanted a life with Kay Adams, but she, you know. Things changed and things happened that he didn't want to happen, but they unfortunately did. Um, things out of his control, things in his control, they happened the way they happened, and the end result was he's, he's now the godfather. And I think that's what I really love about this film. This is the transition from father to son of uh, leadership in the family. I just love how that goes, or that happens in the film. And I love the dynamic and the relationship between Vito and Michael. That's something the other two don't have, um, for obvious reasons, especially since, you know, Vito dies in this film. In the next film, we see Vito, but he's young, and he can't interact with Michael in modern day at that point, at least in present day with the film's timeline. He can't interact with him. And uh, it's just, I just love that transition to power in this film. It's just so incredible and so well done. And... Uh, Anyway, that's my thoughts on The Godfather. Um, at least my take on how I came about seeing this film uh, when I did. And I just... I've always loved it. I've always loved it from the moment I saw it, and I still love it to this day. So, uh, yeah. What do you all think? Do you enjoy The Godfather? Do you dislike it? What was your like, experience with it? Did you hear it was all really violent, like me? Or did you hear about something different about it? Uh, uh, yeah, um, that's really it. So, uh, hope you all have a great day, have a great weekend, and a great week. And I'll see you all next time.